Hello and welcome to the Wicker Library. My name is Leah, so happy you could be with us here today. I have been wanting to film a part two to my Studio Ghibli recommendation video for a while now and I finally read enough new books that I would recommend for and in this video. And I also thought that although there are some movies that I want to repeat, but I also wanted to dive into some G-Kids films as well as Miyazaki films specifically, so I'm going to split this video into two parts for each of those. If you have a specific film that you really want book recommendations for, feel free to use the timestamps. You can scrub to any movie that you wish, but I just want to get into the recommendations because I love Studio Ghibli films, I love G-Kids films, I just love the warm vibes that these movies have and they're such a part of my childhood as well and I'm so excited to recommend some books that I also love for this video. So let's just get right into it. So the first movie that I want to talk about is The Boy and the Heron and this movie I saw recently in theaters with my family and it was so 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 good. I love it so much. Specifically the soundtrack as well everything. I It's probably going to be in my Spotify wrapped actually just because I've been listening to it so 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 much. Like I know that, that it's just instrumental but it's it's stunning. Stunning stunning movie, stunning soundtrack and I don't want to get too into the movie and what it's about. If you've watched it you know what it's about obviously but I feel like if you haven't watched it you should definitely go in not knowing too much and I also think going into this book I have to recommend not knowing too much about uh, beforehand is also a great way to go into it. And the book I have to recommend is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I'm recommending this book for this video specifically because of the way that the movie explores these other worlds and these doors to other realms and these overlapping realities and it's very magical realism galore kind of thing and I just I am so happy with this recommendation my mom actually made this comparison before I did but I just think that this book goes so well with this movie and if you know you know but I just think exploring other and multiple worlds and odd little creatures is just it's in this book as well the next movie I want to talk about is one of my favorites, Kiki's Delivery Service. I'm pretty sure I recommended a book for this movie in the last video as well, which I'll link uh, if you haven't seen it already. You don't have to watch them in a specific order or anything like that. But Kiki's Delivery Service is just probably one of the first Miyazaki films I watched and it just has such a special place in my heart. Just the witches and the world building and the coziness and the friendship and it's just it's such a wonderful movie and the book I have for it is actually my current read and that is Crumbs by Danny Sterling and this is a cozy cozy graphic novel that is so endearing and it follows this romance between these two characters and they meet in a magical bakery one of them is a seer one of them is also a witch, I think. Um, it's kind of a world where everyone's a little bit of a witch and it's just so wonderful. The world building it, it it's just, it's lovely. I love all of the little creatures. I love the baked goods and the bakery atmosphere, the friendships, the romance as well. It's just so, so heartwarming and I could not recommend this graphic novel more. Next film we have is Ponyo and this this movie just it's everything to me and the book i want to recommend is another graphic novel and that is aquacorn cove by k o'neill i believe is the author and their art style mm, immaculate incredible i love their art style so so dearly it's so gorgeous and i have another book by k o'neill on this list but aquacorn cove i want to recommend for ponyo the environment of the beach and the water and the ocean and then just the learnings of wanting to protect the environment and family ties that stretch 
beyond what you would even know is possible. And just the creatures as well in Aquacorn Cove are so cute. They're like these unicorns, but aqua. Like they live in the water and under the sea. And it's really, it's really sweet book. It's very short and the illustrations are just so wonderful and colorful and I love this book so much. I need more people to be talking about it. Next movie we have is Castle in the Sky, one of my all-time favorites. I've rewatched this movie so many times and you know what? I still think I'm I'm in the mood for a rewatch, as I usually am. And the book I have to recommend for lovers of Castle in the Sky is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. And this one, the things in common between these two are peaceful, cozy robots and beautiful worlds that are built within and around nature. And a Psalm for the Wild Built was one of my favorite books of last year, and the sequel is just as good. And it follows a monk and a robot and their friendship, and I just feel like Castle in the Sky has similar robots to me. Like, I picture them rather similarly as far as design goes, but also just the atmosphere of a world in nature. And granted, a Psalm for the Wild Built does not take place in a castle in the sky, but there are enough similarities that I feel very confident recommending this for the same fans. <laughs> Next we have Nausicaa, uh, Valley of the Wind, and this movie has so many interesting creatures in it, and bugs, and characters, and it's just so wonderful. And the book I have to recommend is another by Kay O'Neill, and that is The Moth Keeper. It is also a graphic novel, and it is one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. I say that very confidently. It was a favorite of last year, and I cannot get enough of this graphic novel. I love it so, so much. And it also explores loneliness and a cozy world surrounded by unexplored and unexplained darkness, just like Nausicaa does. Um, and I just really like the pairing of these two. I feel like they complement each other rather nicely. And I do feel like if you enjoyed Nausicaa, you would also enjoy this book. It just it just makes sense to me. The Moth Keeper is also one that I think is very versatile and any age anyone can probably read and take something from it and I, yeah I, I need to push my agenda here. The Moth Keeper if you go if you walk away from this video reading anything let it let it be the Moth Keeper. We have now Arietti and this film is so interesting and the book I have for it is one I really enjoyed obviously, and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I feel like this book and this movie share this kind of adventure plotline and, again, secret worlds. That's going to be a constant theme in a lot of these just because Studio Ghibli films often explore these secret, unexplored worlds that are just so beautiful, and that's also why I'm recommending a lot of graphic novels this time around. If you're looking for less graphic novels, my first video goes into more typical novels and stories, but I just... Half a Soul isn't even a graphic novel, but Half a Soul is a fairy novel, and it follows some fae creatures and I feel like it pairs really well with Arietti just because of the light, the, the, I just, I can't explain it. The adventure in Arietti feels very similar to the adventures going on in Half a Soul. And I think some of the characters also feel a bit like they would do well in the world of Half a Soul and vice versa. So yeah, it also gave a bit of Howl's Moving Castle energy, but but not enough to recommend Howl's Moving Castle for it over Arietti. So next we have the classic, which is Spirited Away, and this time around I want to recommend Don't Go Without Me by Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This was my first read of 2024, and it's probably going to be a favorite read of 2024. It is a graphic novel of three short stories, and they are just so, so beautiful. And the first story especially feels very spirited away-esque, and that's just how they explore spirit worlds and love and just 
The color palette as well of that graphic novel is so lovely and I could totally see it being adapted into a Studio Ghibli film, even though that would take away Rosemary Valero O'Connell's beautiful, beautiful artwork, which granted Studio Ghibli is, has also great animation, but I feel like the artistry in Don't Go Without Me is just untouchable, truly. The final Miyazaki film that I want to touch on is Whisper of the Heart, which I only watched Whisper of the Heart for the first time last week, I think, and it took me way too long because this film was phenomenal and everything I've ever needed, and it reminded me a lot of The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, just in the way that it explores a relationship, a, a romance uh, that is kind of interrupted by ambition and just the magical storytelling and the stories within the stories and the vibe and the atmosphere of that movie just reminded me a lot of The Night Circus and specifically the characters within The Night Circus. Granted, Whisper of the Heart does not take place anywhere near a circus or any kind of atmosphere like that, but it does feel very similar in the way that the relationships are formed and I just I love that movie so much. I'm so thankful that I finally watched it. I don't know what took me so long, but I watched it, I loved it, and I have to recommend The Night Circus for lovers of Whisper of the Heart. Moving on to some phenomenal G-Kids films, we have firstly Song of the Sea, and this movie I was one of my favorite movies growing up. I would just continuously rewatch it with my younger sibling. We loved the animation style, we loved the soundtrack and the songs and the music, and just everything about it was so, so lovely. And the book I have to recommend is one that comes out actually April 9th, but I was lucky enough to receive and read and love an arc of it, and that is A Sweet Sting of Salt by Rose Sutherland. And all I have to say that connects both of these books, without spoiling too much of either one, is Selkies. Selkies and beautiful, lush, magical atmosphere, and I will say A Sweet Sting of Salt is much, much darker than Song of the Sea, but still would highly, highly recommend that book, especially if you enjoy Selkies and that kind of folklore. Next, we have another arguable classic, which is The Secret of Kells, and for this movie, I have to recommend The Book of Wise by M.T. Anderson, illustrated by Joe Rue, and this one explores magic as power and, again, unexplained outer worlds and creatures that don't have an explanation to them and that you want to harness and control. And I think especially the magic and the art styles between these two books or these two pieces of media just really complement one another and really make sense together. And when you see them side by side, I just, I don't know, I feel confident in this recommendation as well. I feel pretty confident in all of these, but there are a few that I just clicked so, so well when I you know, thought about them. And this is this is one of them. I, I cannot recommend this graphic novel enough. It explores these ocean creatures and this dark magic and it's just it's just so good and so beautiful. Next we have the film Ernest and Celestine. This was another one I watched a lot as a kid and again with my younger sibling we just both watched it all the time and it is such a lovely soft and funny movie and I think I have two books to recommend for this one actually. I think the movie most similarly is kind of like The Tale of Despero, but the one that I wanted to recommend was Snapdragon by Cat Lay and this one, the two things these share is Unlikely Friends and how it begins with the fear of the unknown person. So Ernest and Celestine follows a bear and a mouse, I believe, as the main characters, and they're both really scared of each other. And Snapdragon follows this young person and going into the woods and finding a witch, and they're both also 
rather scared of one another and I just I think it was really sweet finding friends in unexpected places and yeah just a very very heartwarming film and a very very heartwarming book. We have arrived at the final recommendation and that is for the movie The Tale of Princess Kaguya and this one I haven't seen in so long but I do know I've watched it and really enjoyed it. I just definitely need to rewatch it but there is the book Siren Queen by Ni Vo that I think would really go nicely with some of the themes explored in that film and from what I remember some things that these two pieces of media share are kind of this world of magic changing who you are and also kind of looking into power of nobility and fame specifically fame in Siren Queen but nobility in the tale of Princess Kaguya and yeah this was just a really great film that I need to rewatch because I think I saw it when I was in high school, maybe even middle school. It's been it's been a long time, but I recently-ish, okay, maybe like two years ago now, that's kind of scary, but I read Siren Queen and it is one that I think is very underhyped, criminally, I would even argue. And Siren Queen, I think, would be really great for fans of Studio Ghibli, it's definitely not a cozy book and it's rather different from the other recommendations I have here today, but there is just something about that, that it's just magical and lush and really fascinating to follow along with. So yeah, that, that's, my, that's my final recommendation. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Again, if you missed out on part one, I will link it everywhere and anywhere. <laughs> Should be pretty easy to find. But if you have any recommendations of books in general or specifically books that you were reminded of by these films, feel free to comment them. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, maybe comment like the, the cottage core hat emoji. I feel like that would be very Studio Ghibli-esque. And yeah, I love these films. I love these books. And hopefully if you pick up either one on my recommendation, you also really enjoy it. So thank you for watching, for subscribing, for liking the video, for commenting, and I will see you all in the next video.